I just felt really squished. So for some reason, I started doing this little voice. And at the time, Dean had promised a friend that he would make a video for their comedy show. And so he thought that he would interview me in that voice. And it was kind of like a character was emerging. At that time, it was just kind of like a little guy who felt really small. And that's how it started. And so when you when you had to like bring it back again, was it easy to sort of like, you know, get back into that voice? Yeah, actually it was, surprisingly. Um, I think I had done maybe a version of it, kind of, when I was on SNL a few months before, um, but I couldn't hold on to it. It does sit in a very specific part in my throat, and once I noticed it, realized that it was a thing, I could feel in that part of my body like what to do to find the voice. So how do you get into character in the sense of like, oh, do you have the... Well, there's not much of a boundary between me and Marcel. Not that I'm exactly the same as him, but for some reason I know how to be him. Almost like, do you have ever a thing where like you hold in your mind an ideal version of yourself? Like maybe it's a face that you make in the mirror but you can't really hold in real life, or it's a dream that you have of how people would um, see you. I think Marcel, and how he is, and how he behaves, and how straightforward he is, um, feels to me like a personal aspiration for how free I would like to be, without you know worrying about what people think about me or feeling observed. And so, to be Marcel, I mostly just go to an image of what that wish looks like. Is it physically strenuous for you to do the voice or have you sort of like gotten it down so it's sort of like not difficult for you to do it physically? It's not physically strenuous at all. Um, it's it's strange that it is not, but I will say it's a very quiet voice. It's really, I can't amplify it. Um, and that's why we, you know, really rely on microphones and um, also why I often like stick my finger in my ear to hear myself doing it. Hmm. Do you ever find yourself thinking in Marcel's voice when you're not performing? Or is it something that you reserve for when you're in character? I think the way that I think is a lot in Marcel's voice anyway. Yeah. Um, I think a part of who he is is how I privately feel that I am. So now I have a few questions in for Marcel. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So Marcel, do you have any other pairs of shoes or are there any types of shoes that you like to try on? <clears throat> I know that you put your shoes on your own body, but actually for me, um, my shoes are part of my body. So you can draw on them, you can make them like different, but like they don't like come off, like your legs don't come off. My shoes don't come off. But I would like to, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm down for experience. I guess I would be like open to um, trying on shoes over my shoes, you know? I'm not gonna say no, but yeah, my shoes are like, they're part of, they're part of my body. You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Um, how is Alan, your pet lane, doing these days? Um, the thing about Alan is that he's got a really great attitude. Like, if you want to go, he's down to go. If you want to rest, he's down to rest. And, um, that, that's why they say a lint is a shell's best friend. Because he adapts to what you're feeling and, and what your vibe is. And, and that's one of the many reasons for why I really appreciate Alan. And I treasure him as a companion. Great. Um, what is the best uh, advice that you've ever gotten? I guess the best advice that I've ever gotten, um, well, I mean, the golden rule is pretty good. Like, if you don't have something nice to say, you shouldn't say anything at all is a pretty good advice. But I'll also say, if you don't have something nice to say, um, just think of something nice to say. Are you watching any shows besides 60 Minutes? Well, obviously, I'm not, like, uh, the biggest fan of 60 Minutes. I love the show. I absolutely love the show. Um, a lot of times I'll look out the window and I watch the chipmunks um, just like trying to eat the basil plant. And I, I really honestly love what they're doing out there. I think it's hilarious. 
And um, I just, um, I really wish them all the best. Um, in the making of the movie, Dean learned a lot from you. What did you learn from Dean? Um, one thing I learned from Dean is that um, the face hair that grows on a man um, grows back even after you get rid of it. And, and, and you know, that, that's a process that, that they're engaged with uh, continually of grooming. And, um, you know, it seems pretty tiresome, but he has a great attitude about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what is the weirdest thing that humans do? It's pretty interesting how they ride around in their cars and don't, like, constantly vomit. Uh, right. I found a car to be incredibly disruptive to my internal system. <laughs> Have you finally tried raspberries? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. That, that's, a, that's a funny question. Um, yeah, I tried a raspberry. I really enjoyed it. I didn't expect it to be so tart. Um, and I also um, had really only ever thought of wearing it as a hat. So it was really nice to expand my um, experience and um, eat it as a treat. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up, Marcel? When I grow up? I don't know. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to do as a profession, or do you would just want to be a happy shell, perhaps? Oh, oh, uh, I guess like if I could have a job, uh, I, I, I'd like to be a singer. Well, I, I would like to be like a professional singer that all the other shells like come to see. Um, but mostly I'm just like trying to do my day to day. Okay. Um, is fame still difficult to manage for you? Um, I don't really know what to say about that because I feel embarrassed. Can I skip it? <laughs> hey, sure. Can I skip it? Sorry, sorry. Um, and my last question is, how does it feel to know that people are watching you on the big screen in this movie? Oh gosh, uh, I guess it feels really nice that people are watching me on the big screen, but, you know, in the end, uh, I just hope everyone's like happy and um, it makes me feel a little just like I don't really know how to deal with it. I guess I don't have to deal with it at all. I just have to enjoy it and I am.